For those of you that are on the call, we will start in just a minute or so. I want to make sure we leave um, folks enough time to get entered into the room. All right, I think we will go ahead and get started as it is just now a few minutes after five. Good afternoon, everyone, or evening for some of you, and welcome to OWU's own Bishop Plus virtual information session series. My name is Lori Patton, and I am the Director of Admission here at Ohio Westlane. In addition, I'm also a graduate. I graduated in the class of 95. And I'm also the parent of two Ohio Westlane students. My daughter is finishing her sophomore year at OWU, virtually of course, and my son is a high school senior who will be starting at Ohio Westlane this coming fall. So I will be the moderator for tonight's session, which we are calling Love is Blind, Choosing a School Without a Visit. Um, as you know, the coronavirus has turned all of our lives upside down. The months of March and April are usually um, having our campuses buzzing with activity as high school seniors are making their first, second, or fifth visit before their final decision. And we even post many high school sophomores and juniors as they're taking part of their spring break to begin that deep dive into the college search by touring campuses. But of course, this year is different. Um, our campuses are empty, sadly. Faculty, staff, and students are working and learning from home. In fact, next week is the last week of classes for our students before final exams. Sports have been canceled and student organization meetings have shifted to online virtual meetings. We've all had to adapt for sure. And it hasn't been easy, but we're committed to providing our um, students like yourselves and, and parents as well, um, the best possible way to showcase Ohio Westlane to you all so that you can um, still proceed in your college search process. And particularly for those of you that are seniors to help you move one step closer to making a final college decision if you haven't already. So tonight's session features um, five, maybe six, if our six ends up being able to join us, OWU students who did uh, what some of you may have to do. Uh, they each made a college decision without visiting our campus first. Granted, their circumstances were different. They, they weren't dealing with a pandemic, um, but for one reason or another, they found themselves in shoes similar to perhaps some of yours. Um, we thought it would be helpful for them to share their experiences with you, and I'm especially pleased um, that this particular group could join us as they are coming to us quite literally from all over the country and all over the world. Um, one of our panelists is joining us and it's almost 2 a.m. his time. So um, I think to help us uh, have you learn a little bit about our panelists, what I'd like to do first is to invite each of them to introduce themselves to you. I'm gonna ask them to tell you who they are and where they're from. Um, what they're studying at Ohio Westlane, majors and minors, perhaps listing some activities they're involved with on or off campus, and, and maybe to highlight one significant experience um, that they've had while on campus. And I know many of them have had more than one significant experience, but I thought this could be a good way to start. So I think what we'll do is um, go with the the order of the screen that you're all seeing and we'll start with Lewis and make our way from left to right. So Lewis, would you like to start? Sure. Um, hey everyone, I'm Lewis Gonzalez. I'm from Rancho Cucamonga, California. I'm majoring in music education. Um, yeah, I mean being a music major, uh, a lot of my time is taken up with music ensembles, but um, I'm, I still participate in a few different things. So I'm in Greek life, uh, I'm in the Chi-Fi fraternity, um, 
I just joined the ski and board club that started this semester, which I'm super stoked about. Um, but yeah, pretty much I study music and most of my time is taken up by music ensembles. So. And Lewis, what's, what's one significant experience that you can highlight that you've had so far as an OU student? Sure. Um, I think what was most significant for me was being completely independent for the first time. Um, that was something that I was never used to before. I knew I wanted to go to college away from California and um, kind of far from home. But yeah, I think the, the thing that was new to me was just being completely on your own for the first time. Great. Thanks. Isabel? Hi, I am Isabel. I am from San Antonio, Texas, and I am majoring in neuroscience and pre-med um, with a minor in Spanish. Um, so I've been involved in a couple of different things over the year, years. Um, as a freshman, I really dove into a bunch of different clubs, but since then I've kind of filtered out what I really love. Um, so I'm involved with VIVA, which is a Hispanic organization on campus um, where we just, uh, we do cultural events and we talk about cultural issues within our meetings. And then another thing that I'm involved with is um, a SLU, which is a small living unit on campus where we just completed our first year on campus. We're called La Casa, and it's also to promote um, Hispanic culture on campus. And then a significant thing on campus, I think has been living in that SLU because Ohio is so different from San Antonio. I definitely felt completely out of place arriving to campus, um, but making the friends helped. But with this house, it really just, it has, just made my experience experience just a million times better. Great, thank you. Sierra. Hello, my name is Sierra. I am from Manchester, Connecticut. I'm a junior majoring in history and international studies with minors in English, politics and government and women's and gender studies. On campus, I'm involved in a lot of different things. Like Isabel, I also live in one of our small living units. I live in the House of Sexuality and Gender Equality. And then I'm also a member of Kappa Alpha Theta Sorority and uh, a whole slew of other things. And one significant experience I've had, there's too many to count, but my go-to is usually, I took part in a travel learning course through the school. So we were on campus for the semester studying Irish literary politics. And then we actually got to spend two weeks in Ireland uh, in May and June of last year. Great, thanks, Sierra. Um, Astrid was not able to join us quite yet, so we'll skip over to Mohammed. Hi, guys. Um, so my name is Mohammed. I'm originally from Karachi, Pakistan, um, and I'm majoring in corporate strategic communication. Uh, and I'm still like, what's great about OU is that you can still kind of be like wary about what you're exactly going to study for a while. So I'm leaning towards uh, minoring in politics and government and theater. Um, and a great experience I had at OU. Um, since I'm all the way from Pakistan, um, like Isabel coming all the way to Ohio is like a completely different experience. Um, other than the fact that I'm the third person in my family to come to Ohio as Lian, um, I was a little worried about being like culture shocked and stuff, but um, I found out that Pakistanis are the largest international student body on campus, uh, which I thought was really cool. So it gave me the space to explore everything new about my life at that point, but also gave me a great Pakistani base to like have there. So yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Mohammed. And last but certainly not least, Colette. Hi, my name is Colette. I'm currently a junior here at Ohio Wesleyan. Um, I'm from Waterbury, Connecticut, but I'm currently staying in Ohio with another friend at this time. Um, and I'm majoring in psychology. Um, I've been in a, involved in a lot of things throughout my three years so far at Ohio Wesleyan. Um, they range from being in Greek life to being a part of the campus programming board we have on campus. Um, which deals with all the big activities on our campus, such as Day on the J, Bishop Bash. Um, I've also been involved in the interfaith spring break teams where you spend a week um, somewhere else doing um, some kind of focus on service. Um, and I would say my one significant OWU experience would just be utilizing the OWU connection. Um, and just last year, I visited over 16 countries alone um, through multiple things the OWU connection has provided, such as um, a travel learning course um, that was different than Sierra's. 
um, as well as spending the last semester abroad in London. Great, thanks Colette. Um, so uh, before we get into some of the questions, I will remind our audience that there is a Q&A feature included in this um, chat. And so if you do have questions throughout the course of our panel presentation, do feel free to ask those through the Q&A feature and we'll be sure to get to them. Um, so before we get into the juicy stuff, I'm curious to know how you all are doing. Um, how has this transition to online remote learning been obviously you're a few weeks in almost completed now with that so maybe we'll go reverse order and start with colette how are things going for you colette things are going okay um obviously this is not what anyone expected to happen um this semester at all so i think everyone's at this point we've all kind of at least somewhat acclimated to this but it was a shocker at first like i'm personally someone who's a visual learner and i like face-to-face -face interaction, like that's how I learn best. So that was kind of one of my struggles I experienced right off the bat. Um, but as time has gone on, I've gotten better at kind of motivating myself on my own and kind of taking initiative with myself to get my work done um, when it's due. But I've been doing good. My professors have been communicating very well with me back and forth, um, which has also made the process of this all so much more easier, but yeah. Great. Mohammed, how are things going for you? Um, I think the biggest difference is the time. Um, like right now it's 2 a.m. where it's like 5 p.m. for you guys. Um, I, oh, I think I had a routine which I followed really well. Like it was um, classes, work, study, dinner, uh, sleep. That's what life was like. Um, I think transferring my routine to something completely different where it was uh, classes, study, sleep, and that was that. That was the end. You know, I think that was pretty hard. Um, and it's been great because, like Colette said, the teachers have been just like professors have been amazing at this time. They completely understand what we're all going through with connection issues and um, like time differences. They completely understand, um, and they've been pretty good about it. Um, and then professors are always checking in. Other different bodies of power and OU are constantly checking in as well. Um, and there are constant like surveys to help OU make sure that we're all on track and we're trying to do the best, and they're trying to do the best they can as well. So it's pretty cool. I think it's great. Thanks, Mohammed. Sierra, how about you? How, how are things going? And uh, do you have a favorite uh, professor that's sort of knocking it out of the park with the online classes? Yeah, I'm not doing too bad. It's good at least to be home with my cat. I'm trying to focus on the good stuff. Um, and it's definitely adjustment to classes, but I really feel like all of my professors have been really accommodating. Uh, to answer a question about a favorite professor, this isn't necessarily about how she transitioned the class to online but she's been emailing us about every week saying, please come to my office hours. I miss you and I need to talk to real people. Um, and so it's just sort of a nice reminder that professors are going through the same things we are. Um, and we're all just trying to figure out how things work right now. Great, thanks, Sierra. Isabel, how are things for you? Are you there, Isabel? Can you hear us? I can't tell if maybe she is frozen on us or not. Um, sorry about that. Um, and it looks like we somehow lost Lewis as well. I'm wondering if he got bumped off. So, well, oh, maybe he's joining back in as we speak. Hey, Lewis, welcome back. Hey, Lewis, welcome back. How are you? Hey, good, thanks. Sorry, everything just crashed at once for me. Not a problem at all. So we were just talking, uh, you're sort of one of the last to go, uh, wondering how things are going for you with regard to the online classes and the remote learning. Have you been able to um, sort of get into a groove and how are things going generally? Cool. Um, yeah, so it was kind of tough at first. Um, I've never been much of like a textbook learner. I've always needed to like work with the professors and work with my teachers so it was it was a tough transition but i've kind of gotten into a routine um especially these past few weeks um 
so yeah, it's it was it was tough at first, but it's it's going well. Um, I think uh, like it's it's a lot easier kind of to. It, I mean, there's less like anxiety, I guess, with uh, discussing over uh, like the online chats for me. I think with my class rather than um, in person. So it's I don't know. It's just been easier to share ideas. Uh, so I would say it's it's pretty good. Yeah. Great, thanks, Lou. Sorry, I was having a, a hard time unmuting myself. I have a follow-up question for you. Given that you're a music major, have any of your professors done some anything really unique in trying to incorporate um, music into remote learning? Yeah, definitely. So um, our wind ensemble director, Dr. Edwards, actually put together like a virtual wind ensemble where we all um, recorded our part. So he had a, a clip of him conducting and we had to record ourselves on all our parts and he put it together and it was really awesome. Um, but yeah, besides that, lessons and kind of practicing privately is still the same. Mm. But yeah, I mean, the, the virtual one ensemble thing was, was really cool. Awesome, I saw that advertised. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but yeah. great. Well, let's, let's dig into the, the topic at hand um, related to um, choosing Ohio Wesleyan without visiting first. So I guess um, what I'm most curious about to start with is um, if anybody wants to share about how did you first hear about OWU originally? Um, uh, I know Mohammed, you mentioned you already had some connections to the campus with some siblings who had attended. Uh, maybe we'll start with you, Mohammed. What, what, how did you first uh, decide that Ohio Wesleyan was where you might apply? Um, so this is actually really funny. So two of my cousins actually went here and graduated from here. And then one of my cousins came here and then transferred to Penn. But he always said that he always loved his time that one year at Ohio Wesleyan a lot more than he loved his three years at Penn. Um, but when I remember when the cousin who I'm a lot closer to, who's like a brother than me, came here, I never thought, like, I knew he always went here, but I never saw myself going here until it was time uh, to apply. And I kept in mind that it's uh, places that always connect with you the most, as well as people who make the effort that really, and that's where it matters and that's where you should go, because um, that's the place that will make an effort for you. So um, I remember when I was applying, I remember like getting the acceptance and thinking like, oh, okay, I got in. And then started, pro other than what knowing about my cousin's experience, um, I started doing proper research and I was in co constant contact with one of the admissions counselors. Um, and I kind of, as time went on, I kind of started to uh, shortlist colleges. Um, I started realizing that it was OWU that was making a lot of the effort and making sure that, you know, that I'm, I find a good home. Uh, talking to friends and family friends who came to OWU, talking about their amazing experience, and then friends that I had from back home as well who are there right now. I talked to them about it, and they said that it might just be the place for you. So I feel like I went in, like I remember like deciding like three weeks before uh, like orientation, just sit, telling myself, okay, I'm gonna go. And I went into it like with my eyes closed, but I think you know, I was better off coming than anything else. Great. Isabel, welcome back. Sorry, we lost you for a second. Uh, uh, quick question for you. How did you first hear about Ohio Weston originally? Did you have any connections to the campus before applying? Um, no, I didn't. For me, it was completely random. I think I used I forgot what it's, I think it's Common App, what it's called. Um, so for me, I just, I mean, just filtered out what I wanted. I was mostly focusing on universities that had the neuroscience um, program. Um, so that's pretty much how I found OWU. Um, I applied by chance and everything just happened by chance. Um, I mean, there's really no other, I just took a leap. I wanted something different. Um, Ohio is cold. San Antonio is super hot and I knew that I just wanted a complete change of scenery. Um, I didn't know what I was getting into, had never heard of OWU before, but I mean, now's the chance to take those, those kinds of leaps. Great, I apologize. There is some leaf blowing going on in the background at my house. So hopefully that's not too loud for the rest of you. Um, Sierra or Colette, um, any connections to Ohio Wesleyan before you applied? 
actually didn't have any. Uh, even now, when I tell people who aren't like in my family and already know that I go to Ohio Wesleyan, they think I'm talking about some other school. Um, I only found out about Ohio Wesleyan because I checked the box on the PSATs for schools to send me mail. And then I just got a postcard and I honestly think it's just completely by chance that it ended up being one of the things that I opened instead of just discarding right away. But it was a small liberal arts school that had an astrophysics major, uh, which is what I was planning on majoring in way back then. Uh, and there aren't many of those, it would appear. Colette, how about you? How did you first learn about OWU? Honestly, I can't even remember how I found out about OWU. Um, I was like looking at Ohio State. I don't remember why, but I knew I wanted a big school and kind of had that big school experience. Um, and then I guess just one day on the common application, it was like, oh, like you might be interested in these other schools, like in the bottom, like as an ad or anything. And I think I saw Ohio Wesleyan. So I was like, okay, like, why not? Like I'll apply like it wouldn't hurt me or anything. Like it doesn't affect me in any way. Like nothing could go wrong. And so I ended up applying and I got accepted and I was like, okay. And the financial aid package was super, super good. So I was like, okay, we'll leave this, like pin this school for now and we'll wait to hear back from Ohio State. Um, and so it turns out I wasn't accepted into Ohio State until late July at that point. Um, so as a safety precaution, I was like, okay, I might as well get acclimated to Ohio. Um, so why not just go to Ohio Wesleyan? It could be just for a semester or something like that. Um, and then I could just transfer. Um, and so I um, ended up obviously coming to Ohio Wesleyan and I fell in love with it like within the first week. Um, I did not know I definitely am a better person at a smaller school where I'm actually like a face with a name and not just another person. Um, so it was kind of really good to kind of have that confidence like, oh yeah, I might have just thrown myself into a situation I wasn't expecting, but it turned out to be something super, super great. Um, and obviously I ended up staying with Ohio Wesleyan just because I love the campus so much. But yeah, that's how I kind of, my little Ohio Wesleyan story. That's awesome. Lewis, coming from California, what drew you to Ohio Wesleyan originally? How did it end up on your list? Yeah, so my first experience was at a college fair. Um, one of the admission people just called me over and they seemed so interested in me. I think her name is Pat Kelly. If I remember, yeah, that, I think that's her. Um, yeah, she was awesome. She was just telling me all about the school, like answering my questions before I even asked them. Um, and at the time, you know, I, I grew up in Southern California my whole life and Ohio just seemed like this really foreign place. Um, and I saw the picture of Gray Chapel and honestly, that's what drew me in. I was like, this looks like Hogwarts, like this, this is cool. That's a castle, I'm in. Um, so, yeah, I thought, why not apply for it? They seemed really interested in me. So once I got accepted and, and I got a decent scholarship, I think that's kind of what, what really got, got me in the end. That's great. So I, I guess I'm most curious to find out from you all, um, as you were coming to make this decision and knowing that you maybe couldn't visit first um, for whatever reason, what resources did you use to help make this the, de the decision and maybe what was the most useful of those resources in the end? Um, maybe we'll start with uh, Colette. Yeah, so for me as a first generation college student, I was kind of on my own when it came to figuring out what college is and how like the whole college process works. Um, it was kind of just like go and do it and hope for the best. Um, so for me, um, I remember kind of one of the first emails initiated like through Ohio Wesleyan um, was Brad. He's a um, faculty member here at Ohio Wesleyan. He was in charge of new student orientation um, and kind of how that works. And he was kind of sending information about our June orientation at the time. Um, but coming from a low income family, I wasn't able to attend orientation as it wasn't worth my money at the time um, to only come for about two or so days and just fly back. Um, so I was communicating with Brad. I was like, hi, like I can't make it or anything. Um, what do I do instead to kind of still get like the most experience possible 
um, to kind of catch up, not catch up, but like be able to interact with students and feel more comfortable when it comes time to come on campus. Um, and he was very responsive, very quick. Um, and he was like, yeah, like, I understand that completely. Like, it's okay. Like, you, many other students are in that position as well. Um, we'll be having an orientation in August for those kind of students as well. So you won't be missing out on the information students at summer during the summer orientation receive. Um, and so I think that was one of my biggest resources um, at the time, um, as he kind of answered any questions I might have had about being a first generation college student and kind of just how the first semester would go for me. Great. Isabel, what resources did you use to learn about Ohio Wesleyan and help you make that decision? Um, I remember trying to search OWU a lot on YouTube. And a few videos came up. So I remember there was like a, a campus, a virtual tour campus where um, it was just like music and it just took you throughout the whole campus um, from the dorms all the way to like our um, like swim fitness center thing, um, like just everywhere. And I thought that was pretty cool because not really many of the other universities had that. Another thing, I think I found one video of this girl doing like a, a dorm room tour and um, so that was interesting because obviously you can't go to the university. You don't know what you're getting yourself into. Like, I mean, the dorm is like the most important, I mean, besides classes, but like where you're going to be living is like so important. Um, so seeing that video helped. Um, there was something else. I think just like social media, just, I just was always trying to keep up with all the universities, trying to compare. Um, I had, I was between this school and UConn just because like I really wanted to leave Texas. And I had one friend um, who was going to UConn already and she was posting these like photos. So that helped, I mean, I mean, okay, that's a different university, but I'm saying like for this, like if you have a friend or something, or if you find a student from campus, it would be beneficial to follow them. You can see like, cause a lot of students post pictures on campus. And for me, it was just trying to get as much visual aid, I guess, as I could. Great. Muhammad, you, you mentioned your relatives being uh, instrumental in, in helping you learn about OWU. Were there other resources that you found uh, helpful? So I thought, because um, I wasn't actually, to like give you guys context, I wasn't in Karachi that year when I was applying to college. I was in, living in Boston doing a pathway program at Boston University. And um, one of the ways that, because I, I think when you have your parents with you and you have family with you, they kind of calm you down about your stresses about choosing a college. Um, for me, I had to find that parental advice in Alicia, the, uh, my counselor from OU. Um, and I remember just like asking her frantic questions and she being able to answer all of them really, really well. Um, and I think that was one resource that I really, I have to say, exploited. Um, but um, I think social media as well, and then as well as just having friends who, ha who are already there and who are juniors and seniors now, just asking them questions. I think there's one thing um, a college counselor can tell you, which is like the facts, but I think when it comes to experience, like Isabel said, um, talking to someone who's already there makes a big difference. Um, and I think even now when we have um, like everything going on, I think OWU's opened up a lot more doors and windows for ways for prospective students to communicate with um, OWU students. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, and also, uh, yeah, I think uh, the website and stuff only tells you so much, but I, also asking family members, that was pretty good. Uh, talking about older experiences and then I've been able to compare those experiences with my newer ones. So it's been pretty fun. Awesome. Sierra, other uh, resources that you might have used during the selection process? Yeah, so I, I feel like I kind of came in especially blind because I really never talked to anyone from the school. I emailed with my admission counselor, Ellen, like once because every time someone from the school would reach out to me, I would worry that I was bothering them <laughs> by actually replying. So just a tip, you're not. We love OWU and we really want to talk to you about it. Um, but I pretty much went entirely off the website. I think I read the course catalog cover to cover, um, which was fun. 
uh, but definitely just peruse the website. There are tons of resources on there about what student organizations we have and what different opportunities we have, but also take advantage of those actual personal resources where you can get to speak to people who really know what it's like on campus. Great. Lewis, I'm wondering if, again, as a music major, if you had any contact with the music faculty before you came, were they helpful in, in ha having you understand more about campus or were there other resources you utilized? Yeah, definitely. Um, music faculty reached out as soon as I applied for the music program. Uh, they helped me with the audition process. Um, they let me know a few things about uh, the music department, all the different ensembles they offer. Um, I also use like the interwebs mostly as my, my main resource, so YouTube videos. And definitely as a music major, um, I looked at past concerts um, just through the years. I think I saw that exact same um, dorm tour video that Isabel talked about, which is really cool. Um, yeah, and then the course catalog, just seeing how many different majors and minors, that, that was another resource. And that's another thing that drew me in, just all the the different possibilities, because at the time I, I thought about going into music, but I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do yet. That's great. So um, the next question is about uh, when when did you finally make your first visit? Was it um, orientation? Was it in, in June? Was it in um, August when you came for Welcome Week? Um, and and when you when you made that visit, um, how were you able to sort of connect with potential classmates of yours um, while you were there? Let's start with uh, Muhammad on that one. Um, so I actually, my first visit was it was the first day of like welcome week, so like the week before classes. Um, I think for me, it was like putting myself in my dorm and getting in with all the activities. Um, so it was kind of weird because I didn't have that for initial like roommate contact or anything. It was just like going straight in. Um, but luckily they had Camp Oru that was mandatory for all of us. So um, I got to do that. Um, and I met quite a few people, I guess, uh, and who I still like will smile at, uh, smile at when I'm like walking down the J. But I think it was when I properly settled into Oru and met some people and made really good meaningful friendships that like after welcome week, I think it just took some time to settle in. Um, and I think that's the thing with no matter where you go, um, it just, you have to first feel like, okay, you're actually here before you can make some friends. So I think that was for me, just it took a second to settle in before I could. Awesome. Lewis, did you get to make it to campus sometime during the summer or was yours welcome week as well? Yeah, so my first time on campus was the day before classes started, actually. So I was just super late in the game. Um, I had been marching that summer with a drum corps. So I was just gone traveling the whole country. And our our tour had just ended, like, right before school started. Um, so I was kind of going into a blind. I didn't really know anyone. Um, but I, my main, like, connection with friends was someone that I met in my music ensemble who was in the Kai-Fi fraternity. And then they, like, um just introduced me to these other brothers and that's kind of where my my first friends came from awesome isabel how about you when was the first time you were able to make it to campus um i had the chance to come during orientation so that was pretty cool extremely nerve-wracking uh, my parents and i made the drive from texas to ohio and after that time, we like all agreed and promised each other we would never do that until graduation because it was insane. Um, but it was pretty cool come from, coming from orientation because you get to meet all the, the current students and then incoming students. And the current students uh, for orientation, for camp and all of that, they're just like super excited about the school. So then I got super excited about the school. And then the other students, um, most of them were pretty nice. We ended up just following each other like on social media. And from there, the connection was made. Awesome. Colette, I think you mentioned earlier that, that you didn't come until Welcome Week as well, right? Yeah, so I had never stepped foot on campus till the night before move-in day. Um, I had kind of already had a little friend group going um, because we um, all kind of connected on the Ohio Wesleyan Facebook page um, and from there created a little Snapchat group and group me going. 
Um, and a lot of people would come and go from the group and everything. And then our group kind of got tighter and closer as move-in approached. Um, and so I remember the night before move-in, it was like 10 o'clock at night. Um, and I just finished driving from Connecticut to Ohio. And they were like, hey, do you want to come visit campus like right now? Like to kind of see what it's like before move-in. So I was like, sure, why not? Um, so it was kind of like my, it was such a like, weird experience because first of all I just drove 10 hours and second of all like it's 10 p.m at night um and so that's kind of when I first had my um first experience and then obviously at move in that's when I had my first like in-depth full experience on campus um but yeah I utilized the Ohio Wesleyan Facebook group the most um when it came to making friends um our friend group lasted for a while and I'm still really good friends with a lot of them to this day That's awesome. Sierra, how about you? When was the first time you got to campus? So I did get to go to June orientation. Uh, I just hopped on a plane by myself. And then I have the very vivid memory. I was waiting for the shuttle from the airport back to campus. And I was so terrified that I would miss it and just be stranded at the Columbus airport. And there was a girl sitting next to me. I was like, she has to also be going to orientation. I was convinced and it turned out she was and we became really good friends for the first two days of orientation and then didn't talk again until this past year when we ended up in the same sorority. So that was fun. Um, but orientation was really great to realize because I was so scared that I had made the wrong decision. And so actually getting to be on campus, I was like, oh, okay, no, nope, we're good. Everything's fine. We're good to go. That's awesome. So this may be a little bit of a tough question, but two part, um, what were you most nervous about um, in coming to Ohio Wesleyan given that you hadn't had a chance to visit, but also on the flip side, what were you most excited about? Um, and I'm gonna start with Isabel and put her on the spot first. Um, I think the, most, the thing that I was most nervous about was first, figuring out if I made the right decision um, because you don't, I didn't really know until a few weeks into school and I really got used to everything, but I was really scared about that. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what questions to ask or, you know, questions to ask myself to see if this is really the place that I wanted to be. Um, and then I was also nervous about making friends because although I had made those connections on social media, being in person with all those people was just like, it's very different. And I'm very, I started off as a very shy and very introverted person. So I was extremely nervous that no one would talk to me or that more so that I wouldn't talk to other people, but it ended up being fine. Um, and I think I was nervous about a lot of things, but another thing was the professors because I'm also a first gen student. So I was just so afraid that the professors would have maybe more favoritism towards the people who are, um, who have generations of, you know, family in college or something like that. I don't know. I was ner really nervous about how to talk to them, how to be in class and all of that. Um, and then on the flip side, the thing that I was most excited about was also the classes because uh, I came in knowing what I wanted to study. Um, so I was just excited to get into it. And then also the experiences, the first time being on my own, um, I was just ready to get out there. That's great. Mohammed, how about you? What were you most nervous about and also most excited about? Um, uh, I was pretty nervous about, I just think starting college, it was a whole different like thing for me where I was just like, at, like literally moving for four years to a completely different place all the way across the world. Um, even though I spent that year in Boston, I always knew it would be like just this interim period where my next stop would be my final stop in that way. Um, I was pretty, I think, like most college students, I was just, I didn't know what to expect as well. I didn't know what the experience was like or how to be one. Um, I didn't, like, know if I had all the information I needed as well. Like, I was pretty, like, scared about that. Um, and just being able to start, I think once getting to OU, I was pretty nervous about making friends because I, like, looked around and, like, people were pretty confident when I wasn't. So I was like, God. Um, but um, I think that like that nerve wracking feeling simmered down pretty fast. 
but I think being excited, I was just excited to start college. Like it's something like we like I've been planning my entire life. And like uh, when you're like 16 or 17, you don't know where you're going to end up. But like knowing where I ended up um, really like excited me. Like this is where I'm going to, this is like a huge part of my life now. So it's pretty cool. Awesome. Lewis, you're up next. Ex most nervous and most excited. Yeah, so I was mostly excited, I think. Um, I was just so stoked to like get out of California and to see other places. Um, I remember just thinking on the plane, I, when I came on the plane by myself and I was just like, this is a huge turning point in my life. Like this is going to be big. Um, so yeah, I mean, the process was exciting. It was also like, it made me nervous as well. I was nervous about being in a completely different setting. Maybe I wouldn't fit in in Ohio in the Midwest. Um, I knew it was going to be different culturally. Um, I just, I guess I went into it not knowing what to expect. So that's kind of where the nervousness was rooted in, was the unknown. Um, but I was really excited to start college um, and to, to try something new and to try something different. Awesome. Colette, what about you? What, what were you most nervous and most excited about? Um, so kind of going off both Lewis and Muhammad, um, it was kind of, nerve-wracking I guess um being in a new environment that I obviously have never been in before um like I was thinking a little too deep about it I was like I'm in a state full of people I don't even know and I don't even know like anyone like actually close in this state um so kind of having that nerve-wracking feeling like not like that I'm all alone but like I'm all alone in a sense um and so that kind of was it over what like an like a overarching feeling I had um right up until moving then after once I moved in I was like okay I'll be fine like I got this um but also my classes because in high school I was a straight A student like National Honor Society all that fun jazz um but I kind of drifted through high school very easily everything came very naturally to me um, and I was scared that feeling was going to go away and like, I would continue to do that, which I did. Um, and that kind of backfired in a sense, but it made me recognize my strengths and weaknesses when it came to being, um, in an academic setting more, which kind of helped. Um, but I guess what I was most excited about was also like, obviously like I was scared to be in a new place, but also like I'm in a new place. Like I can start over in a sense. Um, like this is college, like I'll be here for the next four years, so I might as well make the most out of it. Um, so I guess that kind of was the most exciting part, like all of the unknowns of what's gonna happen within these four years. Thank you. And last, but certainly not, certainly not least, Sierra, what were you most excited and, and also most nervous about? So for most nervous, it was definitely the money for me. I had gotten this really great financial aid package that made it actually possible to go to a woo and I was so excited but I was convinced that at some point the other shoe was going to drop and something would happen and I wouldn't be able to go and then it sort of did I there was a charge that I hadn't realized that I would have to pay and it was two thousand dollars that I just didn't have but then I emailed the financial aid office and within a couple days they were like yeah you're good we've got it figured out and so that was such a comforting thing <laughs> and it sort of showed me that no matter what happened throughout the next four years i'd most likely be able to figure it out uh, and as for most excited i think just academics and being in college i had been dreaming about being in college since i was in like the fifth grade for some reason it was just like this huge thing for me and being on my own and getting to learn something so specific and challenge myself academically was just amazing. Awesome. So we have a question from the audience. Thanks uh, uh, for starting that thread. Um, and a reminder to our audience, please do take advantage of the Q&A feature at the bottom of the uh, screen and, and feel free to ask questions. But this particular student wants to know, so now that you all are in, college, attending college, what are some of the questions that prospective students who haven't been able to visit should be asking themselves to help discern what college would be like, uh, they would like to go to? So 
I guess, advice on what they should be asking, how they can move forward with the decision. Um, I look, I see a lot of pondering faces, but I'm going to start with Lewis, maybe, if you could start with that question. Sure. I think that's a really good question. Um, the biggest uh, thing that comes to my mind is um, the question of, do you want to go to a big school or a small school? Because I think that's that's really where you're going to see the biggest difference. Um, oh, it's such a tight-knit community. Um, you're going to be in small classes. You're going to get to know your professors really well and have more opportunity for discussion rather than a lecture-based um, kind of class. Um, another thing is, do you want to be in like a, a huge, like big city? or kind of like a smaller chiller like university town um so like in delaware like the college students are are a good population um it's not like a huge huge city but it's it's really nice like you know there's never going to be a huge wait downtown if you're if you want to go to a restaurant or something um but yeah i mean i haven't experienced really large school but i didn't know how much i appreciated being at a small school until i was there in the classroom Great. Who else wants to tackle that question, Colette? Yeah, um, I think another good question to be asking is um, kind of, do you feel like this school is um, wanting a personal connection with you? Um, I know Ohio Wesleyan is really good at making things very, very personal and accommodating to kind of what your interests are and like showing, like showing students like, what the benefits they could get out of um, when it comes to Ohio Wesleyan. Um, I know for a fact um, when there's typically students who like express interest in wanting to study abroad, um, we like to show them the OBU connection um, and all the multiple opportunities the school has to offer when it comes to uh, traveling. Um, like I know one of the biggest problems when it comes to traveling is being a science or STEM major um and having and still wanting to travel and trying to find a good balance between completing your academics as well as getting the travel component in um and so the obu connection will reach out and kind of explain like we make it work any way possible um and like they just reach out personally and kind of show you like you're not just another person we want just for numbers like we want you because you're unique and you would make a good fit into the obu community Great. Isabel? Yeah. Um, another important question to ask yourself is, am I able to go far from my family? Um, homesickness is something that I think all students have experienced or are still experiencing. And being able to decide whether, I mean, like how far you're willing to go for your education. I mean, I left the state and that was really hard for me, but I knew that this was something that I needed to do and that I wanted to do. But I know other students on campus who it was very hard for them to leave their family. Um, so every weekend they might drive home um, because they live close. So that's something to consider. Great. I think Sierra had a comment as well. Uh, one thing I would suggest, this isn't really a question to ask yourself necessarily, but look at how the schools you're looking at handled this COVID-19 pandemic, because that can tell you a lot about where the school's priorities lie. I have been really blown away by how OWU has handled everything. I've felt so much just love and care from both staff and faculty and other students on an individual level, but also on an institutional level. They're really doing everything in their power to make sure that students are getting all of the resources they possibly can and making all of the ac accommodations that they possibly can. So that's something to really prioritize because you never know what's going to happen, and it's always good to know what that school, where their priorities lie. That's great advice, Sarah. Thanks. Another question from our audience actually comes from a parent, and um, the parent says, my daughter is deciding between two similar small liberal arts schools. Did any of you face that experience, and what helped in making your decision? Anybody speak to that one? Mohammed. Um, so I actually did um, face that. Um, I was actually when I when I narrowed it down at the end, I got like I applied to 15 schools and I got into 11. 
which I thought was pretty, not that much, but apparently coming here was apparently a lot. Um, and I narrowed it down to four, including Owu. Uh, and one of the four was my dream school in New York City, uh, Parsons. So I, I think when I kind of like figured out that I might thrive more in a smaller environment, it took the other two out completely. Um, and I had to decide between Parsons and um, Olu. I don't like, there's no reason to do like the hand thing. Um, but I think it was, then I started to like look deeply into what would work, including finances and everything. And I kind of asked myself, where would I get out of my comfort zone more? um because i think college is the one place where you actually get an official chance to get out of your comfort zone um and try new things and um i started to like research and i think it was when like i made a pro and con list about both colleges about what that would offer how i would uh thrive there versus how i would thrive in oru it kind of became really clear and like including like the physical stuff like finances and location and everything um it kind of like Owu's list filled up with the pro uh, pros really fast and there were less uh, pro both had an equal amount of cons but the pros were definitely more in Owu. um and i think no matter what it was no matter i feel uh, how much i would have thrived in the city because i was born in a city i grew up in a big city I think um, choosing OWU was at the end of the day, making that pro and con list and choosing OWU was a lot more beneficial. Um, and I think that you just have to kind of put the two together and compare when you're kind of in that situation and see where you would benefit from the most. If you, like Isabel said, like if you're far from your family or if you're close from your family, would that benefit you more? So I think that's pretty important. That's great advice, Mohammed. Anybody else have that similar situation comparing two small liberal arts colleges before making a final choice? All right, another question from the audience. We touched on this towards the beginning of this, but I think another, um, another round of answering might be helpful. The question is, how do you feel the online teaching during the COVID-19 crisis is going? Are the professors comfortable with the platform? And maybe a related question is, you know, um, do you all have a combination of synchronous and asynchronous classes or is it more heavily skewed when one way or the other so who wants to start with that colette go ahead okay um so right now i don't really have any like online like live classes i only have one that's on tuesday mornings and that's optional as it is um but other than that all of my classes are kind of just like yeah you have these assignments um i'll email you at the beginning of the week and then just complete them by the end um which has been a lot easier on me um i mean there's a pros and cons to it like obviously like procrastination is one of the biggest problems um but it's been um easy i guess in that sense where it's i can kind of plan out when i'm going to complete assignments just so i'm not when it friday comes like trying to get all of the work that I was supposed to do all week um, done right then and there. Um, and honestly, like, obviously there are some professors that are very, very good at um, managing technology and kind of utilizing it to the best of its abilities. But of course, you're always gonna have some professors who may not be the strongest with technology, um, which can be frightening for some, but then also they realize this is a flaw of themselves um, and kind of acknowledge it. And but they work per, like one-on-one -on -one and like as a class to be like, yes, I don't understand it as best as I could, but we're gonna take baby steps together to learn how we're gonna tackle this class from here on out, um, which has been kind of really awesome for me in a sense because online school to me is very scary, um, but my professors have been handling it to the best of their abilities. That's great. I know, um, you know, it, it was interesting. I think our faculty had five or seven days to uh, turn these in-person, interactive, engaging classes into some online format. And so it actually is uh, pretty astounding how fast they were able to do that and, and how well they were able to do that. I know just in my own household, watching my daughter's experience she has a combination of asynchronous and synchronous classes. I think 
as you can maybe imagine just from our panel here today, um, with students at Ohio Wesleyan coming from all over the world, it can be challenging to have a synchronous class situation um, given the different time zones that people are coming from. So uh, my, one of my daughter's professors uh, has a, a taped lecture that the professor sends out each uh, you know, three times a week. And interestingly, I think some of you have heard this before, but he starts every uh, lecture with a sort of song and dance. I think he's he's uh, definitely making the most of this. Um, and then, yeah, there's another class that she has that is um, synchronous. And so um, Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays at 11 o'clock, she sits in front of a Zoom uh, uh, class and gets to see her other classmates and listen to a lecture live. Um, so I think every faculty is approaching it a little bit differently. It seems like the most popular platforms that faculty are using are either Zoom or Google Hangouts, or um, something called Blackboard Collaborate, which is a, a program that the university uses. So, um, looks like we had another question that came in from the audience. Um, and it's, it says, how did you make the decision to go to school out of state? And um, obviously all of you are not from Ohio. And so I wonder if anybody wants to speak specifically to out of state. It looks like uh, Muhammad and Sierra. So we'll start with Sierra. Yeah, so I'm from Connecticut. Connecticut is approximately the size of a postage stamp. Uh, it's maybe two hours across, so there's not much here. And I knew that I wanted to really expand my horizons and get out of my comfort zone, so I didn't apply anywhere in state. Uh, and one of the things that helped me make that decision was just the knowledge that being so far away from home would sort of plunge me into the deep end in a good way. I would really have to take care of myself and figure things out on my own in a way that I hadn't had to before. And that can be scary, but I think it's a really, really good thing. Mohammed, did you wanna add something? Um, so for me, it wasn't so much out of state, more like completely like oceans away. Um, so I, I think I, like international students generally are at a slight disadvantage because they don't get to like come and visit and stuff. Um, and I always, always say like, I work in the admissions office uh, as well. And I always help prospective students that uh, O chose me before I could choose it. And I think it was just like, the ability for like, when I was like, cause I was an undecided student. So how they contacted me and like spoke to me through like different methods telling me like, you know, we know you're undecided, that's what you shared. Um, so they like talked to me, um, they connected me with a professor who teaches UC 160. And uh, she kind of told me about the different ways people thrive at OU. And I think that was a pretty big reason why I ended up choosing uh, something so out of my comfort zone, which was basically kind of like out of state. Awesome. I'm cognizant of the time and we are nearing the end of our hour together. Um, so I, I want to close with maybe one final question for our panelists and that would be, does, does anybody have a, sort of a words of wisdom or advice that you might share with our pan, uh, audience? I, you, you probably all know that we have extended our deposit deadline to June 1st, and it may be the case that um, guidelines will be lifted and we might be able to be open and welcome visitors before that date. But in the event that we can, um, panelists, do you have any advice that you could give to our audience um, about making this decision? Who wants to start? Sierra. So I'm just going to plug Unibuddy here. Uh, if you go to our website, and I, there might be other ways to access it, uh, but we have the ability where you can chat with current students and I believe some current staff members possibly, um, and just ask them questions. You can figure out, okay, this student is in my major and is interested in things that I'm interested in. So you can talk to you know, yourself in three years and figure out what they think of the school and what opportunities they know about that might not be the first thing that comes up when you're searching on the website. Great, thanks, Sierra. Anybody else care to share a bit of advice or words of wisdom? 
think I saw Mohammed's hand. Um, so I think just the biggest thing is don't stress too much. I think we make a lot of bad decisions when we stress. Uh, just like take a second to breathe, I guess, and use all the different uh, ways that OU is offering to contact people who have experience with the university, like Sierra said. Um, it's important to have all the information before making any big decision. So that's really big. And, you know, even if, the, if, even if we don't, like, have a next semester or something, um, I don't think it's something that we should stress over because I have to say, like, no matter what, Ohio Wesleyan has really stepped up their game. Students, uh, professors, and faculty in trying to bring the classroom to us. And I think, like everything, it takes some time to settle in, but I think all of us are doing pretty well trying to like, we've all molded, molded into the situation pretty well. Awesome. Isabel, did you have something that you wanted to add? Yeah, um, I was gonna say that you just, you should be open to just anything. Right now it's a very unprecedented time, but um, even if it wasn't, right now is the time, like I said before, to just take a leap. Um, also try to find not just one interest that you have, but several interests. Uh, for me, I, I knew the major, but I also thought maybe I wanted to, to study a couple of other things. Um, so that was kind of a, an important thing for me uh, to choose a school that I knew that maybe if I don't like this one thing, I can just easily change my major and study something else. Um, and just like, you know, experience it for yourself, go through the classes, um, but just most importantly, just be open to everything and, you know, try not to stress, even though it's a super stressful time. I mean, but yeah. Colette, I think you had your hand up. You had something you wanted to add. Yeah, kind of just obviously we're in very unprecedented times with the coronavirus and everything, but things will work out in your favor eventually, um, whether that be next semester, the spring semester when everything hopefully settles down and life can return to hopefully normal, um, but things will work out eventually in your favor. Um, it's not gonna happen overnight or anything, um, but like Isabel said, like keep an open mind. Um, I was someone who really wanted a big school and wanted that big school life, but I ended up loving a smaller school lifestyle even more than I thought I would to begin with. Um, so kind of just keeping that open mind and kind of just hoping for the best um, in everything, including Corona, um, and just taking it one step at a time and taking it day by day, honestly. Awesome, thank you. Lewis, any last parting words of wisdom from your perspective, advice that you'd like to give to the audience? Yeah, uh, Hamwell's pretty good. I would say, um, Go for the espresso machine. The the cappuccinos are personally my favorite. I, I mean, I like brewed coffee, but um, I would go for a cappuccino. Um, I guess just, uh, oh gosh. I guess just don't, don't overwork yourself. I think take the time for yourself and your mental health. Um, don't be afraid to talk to someone new or sit with someone if they're sitting alone. It's such a close-knit community that you'll eventually get to know so many different people that, yeah, I would just say, don't uh, be nervous to say hello. That's great. Well, I uh, want to close first by thanking all of our panelists for taking time out of what I know is a busy schedule for you all between classes and sleep. Muhammad, you need to go to bed. Um, <laughs> but um, this has been super helpful, I think, for, for myself, just to hear your perspectives, and I hope our audience has um, felt the same. I will put a couple of plug reminders out there. Um, again, I mentioned that our deposit deadline has been extended, so we, we have a little bit of time before you need to make a final decision. Um, if you're still in that decision-making process, we have a ton of different ways that you can connect with us virtually. Um, Sierra mentioned the Unibuddy um, opportunity on our website, and that is a, a great resource to get the inside scoop right from our students. We, as Sierra mentioned, also have staff and faculty and even a few alums who serve as Unibuddy ambassadors. We have um, additional Bishop Plus 
uh, sessions like this one, uh, not only this week, next week, but we're also building out a schedule for the entire month of May. So uh, keep posted on those opportunities. We have a phenomenal nine episode podcast series that can provide lots of really helpful information. Um, our staff, you know, you heard several of our panelists at the beginning talk about the impact that the admission counselor may have had on their decision. Um, we are here and ready and eager and willing to help in any way that we can. Um, we're sort of tied to our desks and our homes, so we're like wanting to have that interaction with students. So um, as a couple of our panelists mentioned, I think this decision comes down to just having as much information as you can. And um, it's been my belief uh, throughout time that uh, even if you have, even if you choose to go elsewhere, as long as we've provided all of the information necessary for you to make the best decision for yourself, in a lot of ways, we've still done our job. So um, please give us the chance to provide that information for you so that you can make the very best decision for, it, for yourself. And again, it is our hope that, um, that potentially we could be back open sometime in the month of May and, and, um, and have visitors to campus and we'll be sure to be the first ones to let you know if that is the case. But otherwise, uh, we'll go ahead and, and sign off for the night and hope to see you all um, at, at a future Bishop Plus series. Oh, let me one more plug. A couple of you asked about how the COVID uh, situation has impacted classes. We do, do still have a few more days of virtual online classes if you'd like to see firsthand how one of these uh, live classes is going. You are welcome to sign up for one of those through your portal um, in, in the Ohio Wesleyan system. So I think those classes will go through the end of this week. Um, so without further ado, we'll sign off for the day. Thank you all panelists for being here. Um, and we hope to hear from you all audience members soon. Take care and have a great night.